Hello everyone and welcome to the Sabbath School panel. This week we are discussing the quarterly lesson Brighter Beings of Light. Today we'll be discussing lesson one, communication with God. On the panel today we have Brother Johnson, Brother Daniel and myself Roberto. If you would like to study along with us, you can find a digital copy by visiting sdarm.org slash publications. There you can find lessons in over 30 languages, as well as past quarterlies. Before we begin studying, let's have a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before thy presence. We are so thankful for this opportunity to study thy word together, and uh, we ask thy guidance, thy Holy Spirit may help us and bless us to consider and, and understand the truth about the lessons we are going to study and we may share with each other and we may be a blessing to not only to our lives but to others lives lives we ask and thank thee for all in jesus name amen, amen. to help us again a better understanding of what our study will be about brother johnson will lead us through a quick review of Come, Let Us Reason Together. Thank you. We're going to review the lesson we started last, last week, which is under the last quarterly. The title is Come, Let Us Reason Together. Here in uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. And here the little note from Patriots and Prophets, it says, The law of God was the basis of this new covenant, which was simply an arrangement for bringing man again into harmony with the divine will, placing them where they could obey God's law. So when we talk about this covenant, we know that a covenant is nothing but an agreement or a contract. And we see that for something to be of a covenant or a contract, there are at least two parties involved in there. And also we see that what is the reason someone has a contract so that you can prove certain things if you need it at a later time. If not, these days we see that even with contracts, they have a breach of contract. Mm -hmm. or a breach of trust and then that's why we see here that this covenant or this contract that the Lord makes never is broken it is promising and again the, the uh, nicely uh, put a sentence here it says which was simply an arrangement for bringing men again into harmony with the divine will usually we see that contract when someone makes a contract with someone else it's more to safeguard themselves or for their own benefit but here we see this covenant that God gives is not for anything of advantage for him but again to bring men into harmony with the divine will and to place them where they could obey God's law so mm -hmm. God knew yeah. that obeying him would be a blessing to man mm -hmm. and he is making this covenant here uh, if any of you have any uh, thought or comment, feel free to just jump in. Okay. Here we see that uh, there are, it talks about in the next section about the two covenants. So what kind of agreement or what type of agreement is necessary on our part? It asks. In Psalm chapter 50 verse 5, it says, Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant, with me by sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So again, when it's talking about the saints, it was brought about that. Who is it talking about? The ones that have made the covenant with God. And not everyone can partake of that agreement. Mm -hmm. So what kind of attitude? We need to have something in order to partake of that uh, agreement. So what kind of attitude do you think we need to have? To come to the presence of God and to reason with God and to consider the terms of this agreement or this covenant. 
And when you think about the verse that was put there, don't you think it's very amazing the way God has put it? Mm-hmm. As it says, though your sins be as scarlet, mm-hmm. they shall be white as snow. Yeah. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Mm-hmm. So who do you think is the most benefited in this covenant, in this agreement? Yeah. Man is. Even though I have sinned, even though I don't deserve it, God is promising that mm-hmm. it will be as mm-hmm. white as snow and it will, they shall mm-hmm. be as wool. But when? when we obey Him. Mm -hmm. And here we also see about the type of uh, covenant options. And when we talk about the old old covenant, it talked about how it was obey and live. And what also comes to my mind is in the time of um, um, Noah, what what was the only main thing that they had to do? Enter in and live. Enter into the ark. That's it, Mm -hmm. as simple as possible. And at the time it was obey and live. And we see that in the new covenant, it was with a better promises. And it talks about here that the promises of forgiveness of sins and of the grace of God to renew the heart and bring it into harmony with the principles of God's law. Time and again, we see that man, even though is forgiven, Mm -hmm. time and again, we tend to falter again and make the same mistakes time and again. But here it says that a forgiveness of sin and of the grace of God to renew the heart because our heart is completely deceitful, it says. To renew the heart and bring it into harmony with the principles of God, God's law. We see that God always tries to make a way that even though man tends to forget him or tends to always disobey, God puts a way where it's not always a slippery slope. There are check, checkpoints here and there where we can always try to come back. And here it says that, uh, After those days, said the Lord, I will put my heart in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Mm-hmm. I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. But all these things, again, if we would take hold of the promises. So there are two parties that are signing a contract. So when is that contract really valid? When it's sealed. When it's sealed. Yeah. You have to yeah. accept and you have True. to sign it. Okay? Without that, even if it is just one-sided signature, it doesn't do much. No. It has to be no. by, as an agreement between the two parties. Mm-hmm. Uh, this old covenant is the one that was made at Mount Sinai and the people promised to obey. Mm-hmm. Obey and live, but uh, humanity by itself is not able to obey. Yes. And this, the, 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 the previous covenant was in uh, Garden, Garden of Eden, Eden, yeah. Was renewed and he is called, uh, is before, but he is called new. New covenant, yeah. It's better because uh, the promise is to put the law, the will of God in our hearts. Then it's possible to obey naturally connection with God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also here it says covenant, but we might think as the uh, two individuals make a covenant mm-hmm. or make a promise and so forth. But this um, covenant with God is almost, it's a promise God is making for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, our part is to meet that condition, to be benefited by. Mm-hmm. So, even in uh, Isaiah chapter 1, when he talks about let us reason together, it's not about whether we can reason it out, but what God is offering is let us think about your case. Your mm-hmm. case is a very miserable case. So, mm-hmm. what God is doing is uh, trying to convince us this is the best promise, mm-hmm. it's the best deal. Uh, yeah. We have nothing to lose. We have right. to just accept His conditions, yeah. accept the provisions, then God will bless far and beyond the, uh, what we imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why He's say, saying, even your, even your sin is like a scarlet, yeah. it'll be white. Mm-hmm. How that happens? It's by, 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 by His power. power. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And like you said, uh, it's only for our benefit. If we don't want, we don't have to take it, but mm-hmm. God knows what is the best for us. Mm-hmm. And again, sure. it's not something that is of advantage for him or benefit for him, but he is looking out for us. And usually when you look at some of the contracts that you, these days they make between company, okay, they look for the advantage of the company, not really for the one that is receiving it. But here mm-hmm. it's a complete opposite that God is yeah. giving the best for us. Why is a covenant necessary? You see, in the, these days, it's very mm-hmm. important because uh, olden times it was more or, more or less just a word by you trust the word mm-hmm. of someone and then that was it. And then we see here that this covenant, the, uh, as in why was it necessary? In the beginning, the only thing that was needed of Adam and Eve was to obey. Because they, they were supposed to enjoy everything in the Garden of Eden, but stay away Except. from that just mm-hmm. that one fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm-hmm. And here it says that the instant Adam yielded to Satan's temptation and did the very thing which God had said he should not do, Christ the Son of God mm-hmm. stood between the living and dead, saying, let the punishment fall on me. So we see that this is not yeah. something that was like an afterthought. No. So when do you think that uh, this plan was actually put up? The, the plan was made, the provision was made from eternity, more or less. The character of God is this, is love. Exactly. But the, the application or the use immediately when man fall. When fell, man fell down. Yeah. Fell down, Jesus stood and take the place. And that is where we see the all-knowing and like uh, it says that God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. God knew this would happen. And that's why this provision was already Mm -hmm. made. It's uh, not exactly the same, but similar to we having a spare tire. It's not to say that we will have a flat tire, Mm -hmm. but you have provision in case it happens, okay? So, uh, but there are uh, times when something doesn't go according to our plan, then we say, okay, let's look for another option. Mm -hmm. But this plan of salvation was not an afterthought. This was made way before the foundation of earth, but it was implemented immediately as soon as Adam said. The necessity was there. Here it also uh, mentions how the, the plan for our redemption was not an afterthought, a plan formulated after the fall of Adam. It was a revelation of the mystery which had been kept in silence through times eternal. Mm-hmm. And also one other point that uh, kind of uh, I wanted to highlight was what it says here. God did not ordain that sin should mm-hmm. exist, but he force, foresaw its existence and made provision to meet the terrible emergency. So great was his love for the world that he covenanted to give his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Many times I have heard and Mm -hmm. um, kind of even thought uh, when you think about uh, certain things, it kind of seemed to be portrayed that God is a judge. He is looking for justice. And we have Jesus who is pleading for man's stead. He is the intercessor. Mm -hmm. And we are the ones that need to be punished. So it kind of makes it seem as though God is a God of judgment only. He doesn't know. But when we see here that it says here, so great was his love for the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God the Father loves us as much as Jesus Christ. And there is no separation, no distinction, no uh, nothing else. Even though we deserve to die because of sin, he was willing to give his own son. And again, Jesus, he was willing to give his life and as we saw here, it said that um, Jesus stood between the living and dead, saying, mm-hmm. let the punishment fall on me. Yeah. So now we see that sin entered due to the deception. And we see that there was a promise made. Here, moving on to the uh, next topic, the seed of woman. Mm-hmm. So, do you know which seed it was talking about? 
Okay, we have the promise in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. It says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God is talking to the serpent, and the rest of the serpent. So, which. which uh, so her seed would be the saint of God, mm -hmm. the Messiah. Exactly. The one that would break the power of sin mm -hmm. and res rescue the, the sinner. We see yeah. that uh, since man is born in sin, there is automatically a higher tendency for us to incline towards sinning. Mm -hmm. So it takes an extra effort to do the opposite. Yeah. But if we don't have this promise, we would see that it would always be just a uh, kind of slope where you just keep on going further and further. Yeah. If you remember, even in the time of uh, Noah, what was the kind of mentality at that time with people? Only Their thoughts were to do evil. continually evil. Continue. But at the same time, we see that there was still a promise there. Yeah. And through that act of the saving of Noah, because he believed, because he was also preaching, and not just him, there were so many others also that believed at that time, mm -hmm. but they rested in the Lord before mm -hmm. the uh, before the, the flood. flood. Mm -hmm. So this promise where I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. This is a check. It's almost like a, a speed bump where we don't just keep on falling deeper and deeper into sin. But here, um, especially when God revealed this promise. He had also revealed the plan of redemption, mm -hmm. how he's going to save. The fact that, that God had to make the covenant because solution was not given yet. Mm -hmm. It was a promise. Mm -hmm. So that's why it had to be made a covenant so that those who would receive or benefit by the promise uh, had to be wait and fulfill that mm -hmm. condition. So here, in Hebrews chapter 2, it talks about particularly the seed, how it, what happens. It's not the seed from someone else, mm -hmm. but it's through the woman who break the covenant. Through the Adam and Abraham. Mm -hmm. So he says uh, in Hebrews, for for as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and the blood, he also himself, the seed, right? Mm -hmm. The God's promise, the Redeemer, he also himself likewise took part of the same. So he gives a very detail how God is going to save his people from sin. That the Messiah will come in humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here also in um, Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, it says that if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed hmm. and heirs according to the promise. So even though we are, were destined to be destroyed because of sin, it's a great promise to be called heirs of God, isn't yeah. it? And here <laughs> we see that... Uh, with the only solution for this one here is, as it says here, the death of Christ upon the cross made sure the destruction of him who had the power of death, who was the originator of sin. sin. So even though we see that, yes, Christ had to die on the cross, but that in itself was almost kind of the beginning of the end of Satan. Yeah. Okay. So here it says in the middle, that which alone can effectually restrain from sin in this world of darkness will prevent sin in heaven. Because if you remember uh, way before that, when, when the uh, kind of uh, confusion or problem originated in heaven, uh -huh. even the angels, some were very flat out, they were on one side, on Satan's side. Some were kind of undecided too. And here it says that, the angels ascribe honor and glory to Christ, for mm -hmm. even they are not secure except by looking to the suffering of the Son of God. It is through the efficacy of the cross 
that the angels of heaven are guarded from apostasy. Mm -hmm. Without the cross, there would be no more secure. They would be no more secure against evil than were the angels before the fall of Satan. So some of these things, it like to our mind, it's very hard to mm -hmm. understand how, yeah. why, and mm -hmm. what will be. But we see that this mm -hmm. great plan, plan of love, that God had uh, established was the only way we had any hope, any yeah. any resemblance of hope for us, which was the uh, Christ giving his own life, even though we were supposed to be. Yeah, you see here, angelic perfection failed. Angelic, mm -hmm. human, or human perfection failed in Eden. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they failed because they were free to choose. Yes. They were creatures. They were not uh, like a robot. Yes. Or God, God was not imposing on them. No, gave them opportunity to confirm their loyalty or not. And also we see that whatever Satan was trying to portray God to be mm -hmm. was completely de uh, destroyed. Yeah. Because when uh, we see here, all who wish for security in earth or heaven must look to the Lamb of God. Yeah. And when Christ gave his life at the cross. Every ounce of uh, doubt was completely wiped away. Eradicated. Yes. Yeah. So after that, there was no re mm -hmm. no uh, space for indecision or trying mm -hmm. to have any kind of uh, confusion as to whether or not God mm -hmm. is really just or not. Moving on to the next section here under the ratification of the covenant. Here it is asked, although this covenant was made with Adam and renewed to Abraham, when could it be ratified? And hence, called the new or the second covenant. And this is what we are talking about a little bit also earlier. Yeah. One was given earlier, mm -hmm. one was given later, but how come the older one we call as the new one and so on? Yeah. So any thoughts on that? The based on the, uh, the scripture that is given here, he was chapter mm -hmm. 9 verse 16 I wanted to um, share with uh, another translation because in Hebrews 9 16 in King James for where the testament is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator mm -hmm. what does it mean so this is basically uh, talking about will yeah right mm -hmm. so in another tra translation it says in the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it. Mm -hmm. So, not long ago, someone in our congregation came to <coughs> certify certain documents mm -hmm. because in order for him to receive the will or benefit of that will, then he needed to prove mm -hmm. the death, death certificate of the person who made persons the will. <coughs> The father or mother who passed away. Hmm. So here it's the same thing. In order for us to receive that benefit, there should be a death certificate. It's mm -hmm. talking about. So we see that this was ratified, and it says it, it could not be ratified until the death of Christ. Until so basically, mm -hmm. yeah. kind of reiterating what the uh, verse says. So even mm -hmm. though this was made way before, again, when is the will or the testament made? When the person is alive. Yeah. But when is it actually put in action or executed after the death mm -hmm. or, uh, of yeah. the one who is making the will? It says here also, it has existed by the promise of God since the first intimation of redemption had been given. Mm -hmm. It had been accepted by faith. Yet, when ratified by Christ, Christ, it is called a new covenant. Yeah. So even though this was the old one, but yeah. it's ratified at the death, um, by Jesus Christ, and so it's called a uh, new covenant. Yeah. So this next section here, again, I also ask here, if it, is, if it was not ratified till the death of Jesus, how did it apply to those children of the heavenly king before the cross? In Hebrew, we are chapter 6, verse 13, it says that, For when God made promise to Abraham, 
because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, mm -hmm. and so on. So God made a promise, isn't it? And in verse 17, it says, wherein God willingly, willing, mm -hmm. more abundantly to show unto their heir of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, lie mm -hmm. we might have a strong consolation. We have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. So promise was made and it was confirmed by an oath. Here in the uh, section, uh, in the paragraph, second paragraph here, it says that we think that a, a pledge or promise from our fellow men, if recorded, still needs a guarantee. Because that's what we do. Jesus had met all these peculiar fears and he has confirmed his promise with an oath, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Mm -hmm. What more could our Lord do to strengthen our faith in his promise. So as we see the in the beginning when the promise of a Messiah or a yeah. Redeemer mm -hmm. was given, it was by faith. faith. Oh. Then Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. because okay, mm -hmm. uh, um, the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. So at that time they were supposed to have been receiving that. But we see that that was offset because of uh, Jesus Christ, yeah. because of his uh, covenant that he had made because he was willing to take the punishment upon himself. And they were all taking it upon themselves by faith. But now we see that as uh, Jesus Christ gave his life, that mm -hmm. it was completely proven. Yeah. Moving on to the tables of the heart. Last portion. The last section here. Okay. What, what exactly do we see? when he talks about the tables of heart. Because we see that each of us have a responsibility, isn't it? it? says, what appeal does God make to each of us personally as we evaluate our responsibility before God? Yeah, because the, the, in the first case it was uh, about, uh, talk about the tables of stone. Mm -hmm. Out, let's say out of the heart in a way. Yes. They understood, they appreciated, they, and they saw, promised yeah. based on their own and it didn't work. Then comes the second case, that's a new covenant and new promises, better promises. And this, I put the law into thy hearts. Into our heart. The tapes of uh, flesh mm -hmm. uh, that can receive, can understand, can, can feel. And then that would work. And we see that, yeah. again, these are all safeguards that God has put. Mm -hmm. That many times, even uh, ones that don't really believe in God or believe in all mm -hmm. the religious uh, laws that we have and so on. Mm -hmm. This little law that we all have, that cares, uh, seems to be putting some checks mm -hmm. into us from doing certain things. Again, it works almost like a conscience that pricks us, mm -hmm. even though someone may not believe certain things, but this yeah. puts a check that it doesn't keep on going further and further. And that's the be uh, best blessing, I think, that having the uh, laws in our heart is. Mm -hmm. So let us uh, think that the, if not for this one, if not for the only thing that God has given us, we would have been completely lost. And again, uh, we, we know that Jesus Christ would have come even for one sinner. He emptied all heaven yeah. and came down. Mm -hmm. The commander of all the angels, the commander of the universe, yeah. and for you and for me. And we should just remember what a great blessing it was for mm -hmm. God to come, come down to this earth. And it has been done. Now for us, we have to claim upon those promises mm -hmm. and press on forward. So as we move on to the lessons that we will be studying hereafter, let us remember that God has a great blessing for each and every one of us. And the only thing we need to do is take hold of it and draw closer to Him. This Amen. is my wish and prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Johnson. And before we go on the main lesson of the day, 
would like to mention the first Sabbath offering of this month, April. We have here, this time, an uh, offering for a chapel in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is located at the east of Indonesia and north of Australia in the Pacific Ocean. And this is considered as the last paradise or one of the world's last frontiers. As also referred sometimes as the land of the unexpected. It's a beautiful country, rich in natural resources, a place where missionaries, medics, and miners go, but tourists rarely visit. Why? Something is there. A de as a developing nation, emerging nation, with a great cultural and linguistic diversity, Papua New Guinea has over 800 distinct languages. It's a lot. The most languages just spoken there in no other part of the world. Our work as Seventh-day Adventist Reform Movement started there in 1998, and we praise God that the good news has since spread into many new areas in the northern and highland provinces of the country. But we have the southern part, and uh, for some years our brethren were thinking about and uh, wishing and dreaming about to establish the work in the southern part of the country. Uh, this is the capital city, Port Moresty. And interesting that it is not accessible easily by, by land. It's just by, by air or by sea because it's so mountainous and uh, the roads are not good. There are no, no nice roads to, to be used. In 2019, a minister from the southern or the, the northern part was transferred to the southern part to Port Moresby. Moresby. Sorry. And a new mission was started there. It's a South Mission, Papua New Guinea South Mission. And then the work is going on, but they need a place of worship. They are looking for a, a place more safe, a safe place, because uh, this part of the country is very is unlivable. It's very dangerous. Theft, holdups, and violence are coming in this city. And our brethren have experienced this personally while carrying God's work forward there. So they are looking for a safe place to build a lighthouse for the Lord in this part of the, the, his vineyard. And we realize God's mercy is great. This God's grace reaches farther than sin could ever go. And these people need the gospel. They need to know that there is a Savior and they may be uh, converted, and they may, may find the true happiness. It is a blessing. It's like uh, a great seat like Nineveh. And then they may repent. And the, the psalmist said, Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands, so that we pray God will richly bless those who are able and willing to offer and uh, let's remember that uh, God loves the cheerful givers. Amen. Let's now go into lesson number one, communication with God. Brother Daniel, please. Yes, once again, a happy Sabbath to everyone. And let us begin a new lesson um, study that we have. The lesson one is communication with God. Yeah. So the whole lesson is basically talking about the prayer, right? Prayer. So is there a need of communicating with God as a human? What do you think? Do we need to communicate with Him? For sure. The need is ours yeah? individually. God does not need in a way, but we need. Mm -hmm. In what sense? Because, because we are so far, so different. Yeah. And we need to be in communion, in harmony with our Creator. We just talked about the covenant. Yeah. 
we just talked about the、uh, the only way God made for us to be saved. Yeah. And、uh, in order for us to benefit the blessing, right? Appropriate to us, there should be a reaching out,、mm-hmm. right? Because there is a condition to be met in order to receive the blessing. Because、uh, simply, in Matthew chapter seven, seven, what does it say? Ask, and receive shall be given. If you don't ask, you won't be. Not receive. If you don't seek, you can't find. You cannot find. find, right? If you don't knock, it won't be open. It cannot be opened. So, here in the memory text, it's a wonderful promise. First John five fourteen and fifteen. This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, ask is one thing, but here it emphasized. According, Ask according to according to his his will. will, right? And then what happens? He hears hears us, us. and、uh, all his promises becomes ours,、mm-hmm. right? Let's、um, go on today's lesson: a model prayer. Interesting. Before、yeah. we go further,、okay. the、sure. definition of prayer、mm-hmm. is the opening of the heart to God as、mm-hmm. to a friend. Yes. This uh, uh, we need this because、uh, n- not that God does not need to know who we are or our needs. He knows, but we need to be enabled to receive Him and to trust Him.、Mm-hmm. And this the prayer does not bring God to us, but it takes but us. take us to God.、Mm-hmm. Yeah,、mm-hmm. by faith. Right. Thank you.、Um, So the first question is asked: Why is it so important to stay in touch with our Savior, right? So,、uh, what's the need? It says in touch, but I think it's more than a touch, right? It's a connection. Connect. There should be a connection.、Yeah. Why is it? Like the branches. Yeah. If the branches don't connect with the the plant, the trunk, or Divine, the case has cannot produce fruits. Cannot survive even will wither and be. Cast have you、out. ever have you ever tried the、uh, like、no. a flower stem?、Mm-hmm. It's broken, right? It's connected still. Yeah. Does it help? Yes. Some, even that damage in the stem, will not able to sustain the flower. Mm-hmm. Some strong plants, yes, with a small connection, it、mm-hmm. still survive.、Mm-hmm. But here, in order for us to, like、uh, in the Bible, it talks about the vine, especially the vine.、Uh, if there is a connection is not sure, you will not expect to have the fruit、mm-hmm. is bearing. So, if we are connected with Him, there is a the result. If not, we cannot receive that blessings. And、yes. that just come come came to my mind that、uh, this our attachment can be not so strong, but He holds us. He is the the one that secure us,、mm-hmm. connect with Him if we want. Yes, He provide all the provisions、mm-hmm. for us to be able to,、uh, but the reaching out. We need to stretch our、yeah, hands. We need to. We need to open our hearts, right?、Mm-hmm. Yes. Right.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, God does speak to us, like you said, through the nature, through different ways.、Mm-hmm. But still, that is not enough. enough. Not enough. Yeah. We need to go. Yeah, God is more than willing to save us,、mm-hmm. but we need to reach out. Okay, then go to next one. Since the disciples saw Jesus often in earnest prayer, what did they ask him to teach? So, disciples were believers.、Mm-hmm. They were born Israelites.、Mm. Uh, don't you think they knew how to pray? At least they. 
they heard the prayers of uh, John the yeah. Baptist and the, his disciples. He taught them to pray. No, I'm Jesus, sure. Many yeah. times they yeah. they saw the earnest prayers of Jesus, but they were. But why did they ask? Because they knew how to pray, right? But they saw the way Christ communicates, Especially. the way Christ mm -hmm. pray was totally different. Mm -hmm. It was not like uh, oftentimes we don't think twice or if we don't have that real connection with God, we just ask, right? Whenever we come to eat meal, mm -hmm. say we thank God and then we ask. And oftentimes we ask a long list of things that we want to wish list, right? But do we really communicating with God in prayer? But when they saw Christ, it was something different. Mm -hmm. yeah. They said, I mean, they were even worried that the amount of the physical labor and time he was spending with the people, they were afraid that he may not be able to sustain his health. Mm -hmm. But when he spent the time with God and coming back, he was a totally different person. Re-energized. Then when he was communicating mm -hmm. with God, he was not just uh, asking things, right? He was really talking with God so that uh, disciples wanted to know how mm -hmm. they can do the way that Christ does, right? Mm -hmm. So here it, Christ gave us a short example of how to pray, but that was asked by disciples because they were so intrigued by how Jesus was communicating mm -hmm. with God. Any other thoughts? This is interesting. This is a model, yeah, uh, example. Mm -hmm. But uh, does not mean that we should just use this as memorize the, yeah. these words and mm -hmm. just tell these words exactly the, as they are. Mm -hmm. They are the essence. They are uh, exalting God at the beginning, and they are thanking God and asking for some needs and uh, giving God all the glory and power and and, mm -hmm. and honor. Yeah. And asking God to forgive also, yeah. Yeah, to forgive us, exactly. The temporal blessings, daily bread, and spiritual blessings. It's a wonderful prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's nothing wrong to repeat. But yeah. it talks about vain repetition. You just, uh, without yeah. thinking much, you just repeat. Yeah. Beautiful words mm -hmm. doesn't mean anything. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the prayer gives us much deeper meaning uh, yeah. if we truly understand it. It uh, almost looks like uh, all the components of a prayer that needs to be there. Yeah. Because who are we praying to? Mm -hmm. We're praying to God. That's where it starts with our Father. Our Father. Okay? Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned about, we have to be thankful for all the things that we receive too. Because God mm -hmm. is giving us way more than what we really mm -hmm. need. Mm -hmm. And we have to submit our petitions. Where it says, yeah, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our debts. Because we, we mm -hmm. do have all this limitations. So mm -hmm. we have to ask for forgiveness because, yes, I was forgiven yesterday. What about today? We, are, we keep doing mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and also to deliver us from evil. So all these things mingle together, but at the same time, just thinking about if we have a nice uh, subject and you talk about just that same subject every day to your friend, the friend will not really mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. So same way, no way in reputation, you should have something new to share with him. And uh, what also uh, was uh, yeah. uh, something that caught my attention under yeah. 1A was, mm -hmm. in order to commune with God, we must have something to say to him concerning our actual life. Mm -hmm. When you are sharing, he knows already, but God, mm -hmm. I had all these wonderful things that happened to me. And uh, so he, he is happy to hear from us as a friend. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. as Brad Duarte mentioned in the op beginning, mm -hmm. it's opening the heart to God as to a friend. So all mm -hmm. these things is he is not someone that's unreachable. He is our dear savior and friend. Yeah. And that's what he's trying to show us that mm -hmm. to be like a friend. Mm -hmm. Just uh, going a little bit, uh, it's interesting that uh, when we pray publicly, mm -hmm. 
we are a little as humans we are concerned about the words we are going to say eloquent uh, <laughs> and how people will hear and think and then we are a little pressed and, and limited in some somehow we are not so uh, relaxed to talk as to a friend and uh, some of us do that more or less like a conversation uh, things are new like you said things of the moment not mm -hmm. just uh, those words more or less yeah it is interesting it gives us a, a different experience mm -hmm. thankfulness and the, the sense of dependence upon God mm -hmm. and the trust in him mm -hmm. it's a blessing yeah. but we we can make our experience developing yeah on Monday's lesson it talks about the address how we address mm. right um, just the wondering how the Hebrews at the time they were addressing God in prayer because as you might uh, heard about the Israelite the Jews they don't even pronounce the name of God mm -hmm. right they're very careful Reverence. how approach God so now here they are still doing that. And how about uh, 2,000 years ago, right? So, and Christ is teaching them how to pray when they were asked to pray. And he said, Our Father, Father which art, art, in, art heaven. in heaven. So, he was introducing God as our Father. Compassionate Father. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in Romans, what does it say? Mm -hmm. Even even closer, Abba, Father. Abba Pai. It's more Abba more um, close. Uh, yeah, close yeah. relationship, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, dear dear way of addressing Father. Mm -hmm. uh, someone may take that is a wrong way and kind of making uh, our God as like a very common, yeah. uh, common way of addressing. But here, when Jesus was teaching us how to address him to make sure that he is our dear father yeah. who really care for our needs. We then, also yeah. see that like um, in the old system, it was almost like you cannot come closer to God. Like there was mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. a separation. So even if you see the, only the high priest would go into the most holy place to be kind of closer to God. But here with Jesus uh, example or his explanation, is almost like it says here um, in the note uh, it says they are his little ones dear to the heart of God mm -hmm. bound to him by the most tender and abiding ties mm -hmm. it's almost like when uh, when a father goes away on a trip mm -hmm. and you come from the trip you're so tired and exhausted and hungry and when the child comes do you just say go away get, let me have rest no we have that bond that you mm -hmm. you forget all those things and you are tender and compassionate and Mm -hmm. uh, loving and mm -hmm. that's how he was trying to bring that mm -hmm. even though we are his um, uh, kind of uh, what do you call that disobedient children but the father mm -hmm. is kind and tender-hearted mm -hmm. yeah. and not only the uh, the how we call him but it gives you a very uh, personal connection the father is it's a direct right mm -hmm. It's an immediate connection with God and it's um, when we approach our Heavenly Father, it's not my friend's father, mm -hmm. right? Or our neighbor's father, it's my father. It, that's yeah. what uh, John 20 verse 17 says, I ascend unto my Father and your Father mm -hmm. and to my God and, and, and your, God. your God. So, if we truly understand as Christ was Son of God, that we are called the Son of God. Yeah, children yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, are, what other important role does God have besides the friendly term, our Father? Is it just uh, uh, like our Father? And what else can we address Him? He is like? Lord He's our King. Lord. King. Our King and my God, God. my God. Yeah. It has a mm -hmm. whole lot more mm -hmm. um, meaning to us. Yeah. 
because a uh, earthly father has a very much limitation, <laughs> right? <laughs> we can promise a lot, but oftentimes we cannot even prom- uh, fulfill <laughs> the promise, yeah. right? And uh, in different ways. Yeah. And these days, interesting, I was, uh, I came to the sense that uh, the, the, and mentioning my private prayer that uh, God, the, the creator and keeper of the universe, the in- entire universe is the same creator and, and my keeper mm-hmm. and provider and, and, and friend. Even. Mm-hmm. It's a blessing. You. And mm-hmm. Jesus is the one that was sent to reconcile me with mm-hmm. God, with the Father, mm-hmm. so that we feel at home. Yeah. In the next That's section, great. once we address him as our Father, What's the first thing that just remind us to not to forget? Our be the name, isn't it? Then that well, thanks we need to give thanks. special thanks. thanks. Why is that? To realize his blessings and his love, his care for us. It's also an acknowledgement, mm-hmm. acknowledgement that everything comes from him. But how can we be thankful? that when we are going through difficulties, uh, we may lose our loved ones, we may go through the trials and other circumstances. Even How so, can you be thankful? Even so, it is well with my soul. Mm-hmm. He knows better and he, he, he is doing the, the best for us. We are subject to all these situations, but we may trust him, there, is prom- there are promises and solution for everything. And uh, the comfort comes from Him. We can give thanks in every situation. So like a children, when they're pr- playing mm-hmm. or doing other things, and they, they, they have their own troubles, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? Sometimes they're uh, most maybe cherishing the toy broke, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What do you do? Where do you go, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. The father. Go to the father because why is that? He is the solution. <laughs> because it's not about just the, the circumstances or the, just the solution, because he he provides everything. Yeah. And he takes care of. And then all our sorrows and difficulties we can be comforted. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So in that sense, even though the trials that we go through, at times, that's covering mm-hmm. everything, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's block our sight. But at the same time, if we truly understand how God is and how much He can really help us, mm-hmm. that all these trials are like broken toy, <laughs> right? Yeah. So at the end, it's nothing. So mm-hmm. if we truly know and trust in God, mm-hmm. we can do anything less than thanking God yeah. and uh, approach Him with our troubles, right? And um, here um, in First Thessalonians, what does it say? In everything, the, give, give thanks. thanks. Give thanks. Everything. For this is the Will of, Will God. of God. Why this was given? Mm-hmm. Someone can read the next sentence there. This command. This command is an assurance that even the things which appear to be against us will work for our own good. Mm-hmm. God would not bid us to be thankful for that which would do us harm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One other thing that comes to my mind is uh, where it says that if we sinners are, uh, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much yeah. more our yeah. Heavenly Father, who always looks out for the good of His children. Because uh, many times as a human being, human parent, we do the best for our children, but not so much for the others and so on. Even out of being sinful and we are always trying to look what would be advantageous for us, then how much more our Heavenly Father? There's no way to compare or to, to mm-hmm. measure it at all. Mm-hmm. Even though um, it's uh, recorded history, but the uh, example of Jehoshaphat, um, when they were in dire need Mm -hmm. of salvation, the enemy came with a great army that they cannot Mm -hmm. even uh, 
compare it and handle it. Mm -hmm. So, he was given a promise, right? Wonderful. What was the promise? You shall not need to fight in this battle. Yeah. Set yourselves. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. So how can you not worry when the <laughs> enemies are <laughs> all around, right? <laughs> but here, there is a faith that mm -hmm. is needed. Yeah. And that's why, even though we go through the trials, um, it is a promise. When he says, give thanks in everything, it is a promise also, right? Uh -huh. So what happened to them, Jehoshaphat and uh, his people? Did they do something extraordinary? They did. They didn't wait until... Unusual yeah? way <laughs> to go to the battle, yeah. killed, singing. They give thanks before God. they saw the actual signs. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's uh, recorded in the, this sacred history. Yeah. Yeah. And then without seeing the salvation, they already thank the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. In yes. a way, they had no other choice. Mm -hmm. That's why, first of all, they went to plead. Because, humanly speaking, when all these three different uh, group of people came, mm -hmm. they had no, no other option. Mm -hmm. And when God says, it will be done, you don't have any other. It's like, it's, mm -hmm. it's a done, done deal for them. Because mm -hmm. when God promises, it will be accomplished. Yeah. Interesting, Samad commented that uh, for sure, certainly the enemy heard the, the, the praise and the, the, the joyful noise, and they saw that they, they have some, uh, some help, some, some, how you call it, some support, and we are, you are, we are lost. And mm -hmm. they, uh, by God, they, they start to fear and to, they got confused then. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is amazing how God yeah. works. Yeah? And also the um, one thing that we should not forget that we talked about covenant and all that, but the uh, now actually they destroyed themselves. at the cross, everything was fulfilled already. So it's no longer a just a promise or a covenant. Mm -hmm. It is also mm -hmm. already become ours to claim. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in the advent, Adventist faith, mm -hmm. that now it's more than the cross. Now Christ in the most holy place, in the doing final atonement to give us the ultimate, the benefit of forgiveness. Um, so if we truly understand that, uh, there's nothing that we should worry about, especially um, uh, many Christians today worry about the perfection. If Jesus comes tomorrow, how can you be saved, right? But ultimate salvation is in Christ. And Christ is already doing that work. So we just need to express our faith in Him that we may receive the blessing, right? So, well, let's go to the next section on Tuesday, petition and closing. So what are the petitions? Uh, we may not go through all the details of the uh, Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. the, the, the one thing that was emphasized here is about mm -hmm. asking our, yeah, name. our need. Yeah, for our needs. What are the main needs do we have? Physical ones and spiritual. Spiritual right? are more important, but mm -hmm. usually we are more concerned about temporal things. Why do you work every day? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> because we, <laughs> we are feeling the need of physical mm -hmm. food and uh, things, right? Mm -hmm. But here, uh, what are we truly asking the Lord to help us? Yeah. In our spiritual life, this... Jesus challenges yeah. us, right? Yeah. 
mm -hmm. those uh, food and what to eat and what to wear is mm -hmm. who who worries about the, the birds, birds don't, don't even the heathens mm -hmm. oh yeah right they, they, they worry yeah but does God know what we need much more than we for sure we, we for think, sure yeah but so mm -hmm. uh, our greater uh, desire mm -hmm. and our uh, petition should be our spiritual need, yeah. right? Spiritual need. Because without his uh, the eternal life that comes from him, we cannot have a hope mm. of salvation, right? Whether it's righteousness, whether it's life, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, uh, the power to overcome the trials that has to come from mm -hmm. Him. So in that sense, yes, we don't forget to pray for the meal, but we truly need to understand our need of dependence yeah. on His uh, spiritual help. Right? Any other thoughts? That is... Well, that's well, even more the, important because mm -hmm, we even yeah. see the temptation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That was the appetite was one of the things that Satan was tempting him with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just the next question just uh, confirms that our, our spiritual mm -hmm. is there. Yes. Since the main purpose of prayer is a spiritual in nature, what mm -hmm. specific request can never be forgotten. So what would that be? Forgiveness. Luke 11, 4 says, And forgive us our sins, yeah. for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Mm -hmm. And how about temptation? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So, mm -hmm. do we really need to worry about temptations? Yes, everyone yeah. is being tempted. Mm -hmm. Because without his help, yeah. no one can overcome yeah. temptations. Yeah. So, mm. is there any particular day we don't have temptations? Hmm. Is there a particular place that we don't have temptations? Everywhere. We can go and then leave our family members and all the people that who bothers you and then go in the mountains. And relax. <laughs> Can we have a free from temptation? <laughs> yeah. Yes, temp yeah. temptation itself is not the issue or the problem, but yielding to temptation. So mm. we know that even Jesus was tempted. If he was tempted, how much more we? Because by now with uh, Satan's uh, uh, being able to see our life from our birth and to see huma humanity from the beginning till now, he knows every person's weakness. Mm. So only by his help can we be overcomers. We will mm. be tempted, but that is not sin. But if we yield, um, it was also mentioned uh, that uh, um, he cannot force us to do, mm. but he can cause us. We have to still yield ourselves. Yeah. And that is why we have to pray that almost like the prayer of the Father. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Like we know, but still we tend to do it. That's why we have to ask God, please help me to overcome. Hmm. So oftentimes when we fail to trust in God and fail to, I mean, trust our own selves, mm -hmm. that surely there is a failure yes. that come in our uh, spiritual life, right? And... Um, Let's see, in the note here, the third note in the middle, he knew, our brother Duarte, mm -hmm. could you help us to read from there to the end? Yes, which, which part? The third one in the middle is that he knew how Satan. He knew how, yeah. Satan, how yeah. he, knew. he knew how Satan would work to paralyze their senses that they might be unready for the trial, the disciples. Huh? Therefore, it was that he gave them warning. Had those hours in the garden been spent in watching prayer, 
Peter would not have been left to depend upon his own feeble strength. He would not have denied his Lord. Had the disciples watched with Christ in his agony, they would have been prepared to behold his suffering upon the cross. They would have understood in some degree the nature of his overpowering anguish. Can you imagine? You know, to be so disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> Even though the disciples yeah. could have gained the victory mm -hmm. if so, they prayed. prayed. Yeah. And how often uh, daily we forget to pray and yeah. uh, ask to watch. God's mm -hmm. guidance. And then we are rushing out the door hmm. and then we fail. Yeah. Um, oftentimes we don't realize until later day that uh, we, we failed yeah. in temptation or failing to um, overcome certain uh, trials yeah. that comes. Yeah. So uh, our need of depending on Him is it's constant. constant. Yeah. Watch and pray, yes. Okay then, the next section, answers to prayer. What are some of the main reasons why prayer is not always answered as we hope? What do you think? Yes, we can ask the Lord. Hmm. Uh, in the beginning, in the key text, what is it? Ask everything. According. Ask anything. According. According to? To His will. His will. So, the reason that we don't get answer? We ask according to our hmm. will. What yeah. else could be? That many times it's not in harmony with the will of God. It's a selfish needs. Or mm -hmm. And also, if we have sin, sin. Yeah. in our heart, unconfessed, then the Lord will not yeah. us. We, our yeah. heart is not conditioned to receive His blessings. Yeah. Like uh, forgiveness. We ask the Lord to forgive us, and yet we fail to forgive when another, another yeah. person. Yeah. Then how can we understand even their forgiveness and appreciate right? mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. forgiveness so oftentimes mm -hmm. when we are not uh, in harmony mm -hmm. with God in that sense that we cannot receive mm -hmm. his blessings so in the note it emphasized the uh, if we cling to any known sin the Lord will not hear us but the prayer of the penitent, contrite soul is always accepted. When all known wrongs are righted, we may believe that God will answer our petitions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we need to make sure that um, it's not so much as to ask the Lord, but like we discussed in the beginning, the prayer is lifting us up him, to, to the level where God is. Yeah. So in order for us to reach, that we need to search our heart. It's not about our request. Uh, Submit and we are waiting for the answer to come. But in reality, the prayer is uh, making us in harmony with God. That when we, when we are in harmony with God, there is nothing to worry about because all His promises becomes Ours. Ours. Yeah. So, feel. also the uh, it mentions in the note the self must be entirely surrendered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the same same thought. So, what is necessary for prayer to be answered, and why? What else? You need to have faith. Faith, as it says in James. And not wavering, not doubting, right? Uh, if we, but what are we having faith in? On that, mm. it should be a promise, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's not yeah. on the things that I will get what I want, yeah. what I asked. That's that's uh, maybe is it my wish, but it's not really faith. Mm -hmm. The faith has to have some substance mm. that we are basing on. So, oftentimes. 
oh, I prayed the Lord to give that and then uh, help me with that, but He didn't, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So why we don't get the answer? Because we do not have a faith. We do not have faith, nor the right motive. We 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 are not understanding what really is. But the uh, also at the same time we need to realize God does know our real need. Correct. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Children ask many things, right? <laughs> they do. Uh, the younger, the more in some way, <laughs> right? And they disappoint when they go to the store, whatever they see, they want it. But is it good for them to have it? No. Most no. of the times, they are not. So, mm -hmm. uh, the, the irony is, when we say God does not answer, mm. God answers all the time. Yes. Yeah. And every time, he says yes and also no. No. When he doesn't, when you don't get, it's not God is not answering. God is answering, say no. No. <laughs> and then, sometimes it's yeah. not just not the way we wanted to mm -hmm, do it. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. We ask for something, it is mm -hmm. being answered, but not in the way we are hoping mm -hmm. it would happen, but mm -hmm. in God's own way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why don't you read the note, Johnson, on that? And sometimes he yeah. says, Wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. When we do not receive the very things we asked for, at the time we ask, we are still to believe that the Lord hears and that He will answer our prayers. We are so erring and short-sighted that we sometimes ask for things that would not be a blessing to us. And our Heavenly Father in love answers our prayers by giving us that which will be for our highest good, that which we ourselves would desire if with vision divinely enlightened, we could see all things as they really are. When our prayer seems not to be answered, we are to cling to the promise, for the time of answering will surely come, and we shall receive the blessing we need most. But to claim that prayer will always be answered in the very way and for the particular thing that we desire is presumption. God is too wise to err and mm -hmm. too good to withhold any good thing from them that walk uprightly. Then do not fear to trust Him, mm -hmm. even though you do not see the immediate answer to your prayers. Your prayers. Amen, amen. And this, this yeah. whole paragraph, it just gives the complete mm -hmm. um, summary of, if you ask in His name, He will answer it. Mm -hmm. Just don't mm -hmm. try to be presumptuous mm -hmm. by saying that it will be answered in the way we want and for the same, the, the, the exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. Because God... And again, to think about uh, even uh, uh, the ex um, experience of Elisha and his mm. uh, servant, mm -hmm. he was so scared because all the soldiers had surrounded them. But Elisha was not scared at all. But when he prayed to God to open his uh, eye and he saw the uh, angelic hosts around, then he was mm. <laughs> he, mm -hmm. all his fear was uh, driven away. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where it says that if we would really see it, like you asked the questions certain times how can we be thankful for certain difficulties we go through mm -hmm. if we wait for several years or maybe decades then we would remember that was a providence on god's part like we didn't understand at that time but god mm -hmm. knew what was good mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. we do not fear to trust him yeah. even though we know that we do not see the immediate answer to our prayers mm -hmm. Okay, the next section, pray without ceasing. In all prayer, what important point are we to always recognize and be ready to yield to? So, when we pray, we need to have one thing that we make sure that we are asking according to God's will. His will. So, it's not so much as to how can I get the most out of God, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, the whole focus is how we can reach and uh, in spiritual blessings, uh, especially that how we can uh, 
elevate ourselves mm -hmm. uh, closer to God, right? So yeah. that um, we'll be delivered from sin, our temptations, and we can receive that spiritual blessing that we become also part of blessing to others. That's the ultimate focus we should be. And um, when we understand His will, when we are willing to help others, uh, God is more than willing to use us and bless us uh, for His purpose. And it's not so much even His purpose, it's not for His benefit, but also for our, for our benefits. Mm -hmm. yeah. So also here um, mentions about how, what things that we need to ask for, right? What are the things mm -hmm. that according to His will? The second part of the note, what do we need, what we were asked to pray for? It says, for the pardon of sin, for the Holy Spirit, for a Christ-like tem temper, for wisdom and strength to do His work, for any gift He has promised, we may ask. Then we are to believe that we receive and return mm -hmm. thanks to God. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a definite list that we can uh, count on that God will answer uh, our prayers here. And um, oftentimes, uh, when we are trying to access something that it requires password these days, right? <laughs> hmm. Or signature. Mm -hmm. So there is a definite uh, password here. If mm -hmm. you put this, uh, it will work. It'll be, yeah, mm -hmm. it'll be open to us. Mm -hmm. And how about the, um, how often do we need to pray? It says that uh, is the <laughs> breathing of the soul. Mm -hmm. Just without season. The reasoning is it's God knows so. everything, mm -hmm. right? God knows everything. Why do we need to pray? Many times it's more to uh, reiterate to ourselves mm -hmm. yeah, that benefits, yeah. when we put it in our words and give it as a petition, mm -hmm. it reinforces for yeah. ourselves and mm -hmm. also for others that God does answer. Mm -hmm. Like you said, God knows before we can even ask. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But how Jesus asked or in prayer so much? Because if Jesus was in need of prayer, how much more? So that's the ultimate uh, realization that we need to come to. And uh, mm -hmm. so that's why the angels are wondering how, how so little that we trust mm -hmm or feel the need of uh, trusting in God, right? Yeah, that's, that's where we, when you have, when you're working with souls or when you're doing the Lord's work, we realize our inadequacy and then we want Him to impart to us the knowledge and also the, the wisdom, uh, mm -hmm. how to reach out and also how to get these uh, wonderful gems from His Word. Mm -hmm. But when we don't do that, that's where we don't see that we are lacking things. And the reason Jesus Christ spent all night in prayer was because yeah. as he was going and uh, teaching the people, healing, and yeah. he himself need to be recharged. Mm -hmm. recharged yeah. If we don't share it with others, we don't see the need for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we don't see the need to ask more because we don't, our, our, whatever we had has not been discharged yeah. at all. It's almost like your phone. The more you use, the more you have to charge mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But we don't use it. So we don't see the need mm -hmm. or we don't trust, like we were saying, we don't trust enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as we uh, study uh, today's lesson, we come to realization that how much we are in need of prayer and uh, what prayer does. And uh, hopefully through this um, uh, study, that we have that experience, that uh, personal connection with God, and also we have that experience of receiving the answer to our prayers. 
in each day. May yeah. God bless us. Our Father which is in heaven, we thank you so much for thy grace and understanding what God wants us to. Lord, give us understanding and faith that we may trust you, we may come to you for our needs mm -hmm. and help us to learn to communicate in each day. Help us to learn to be thankful and trusting. Please forgive us our sins. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We say again and join us again. We have another opportunity as we study. Delay no longer next week. God bless everyone.